and welcome to this, I think will be very amazing and interesting session about the metaverse. And everybody will hear a lot about metaverse, but uh, somebody will think, oh, what's the industry metaverse? It's, it's like a very strange uh, concept. Uh, so I think today's conversation uh, will be very meaningful for every one of us. Um, as we know that we have already gone through three industry revolutions, and uh, since 1990s, the continuous emergency of tech innovation, um, the uh, continuous uh, emergency of te tech innovation has greatly improved the uh, efficiency of global manufacturing and the global trade. Um, so everyone today will talk about what will be the next generation of the tech innovation. So I think today's three speakers will give us many examples uh, for today's uh, discussion. I will introduce today's session's uh, rules today. Uh, uh, I hope that everyone here uh, don't forget to uh, use the hashtag. The Oh, what's the hashtag? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, the WEF23 when you are sharing your social media. <laughs> okay, and uh, we will have two parts of this session. The first part, uh, I will have a conversation with three outstanding speakers, and uh, the last 10 minutes, I will give, the, give you the free Q&A time, and if you have any questions, you can handle up, and uh, we can talk more. So I can't wait to introduce our three outstanding speakers here. And the first, um, Mr. Professor, Professor Lee, uh, he is uh, uh, from Maryland University, and uh, he is Clark Distinguished Professor and the Industry AI Center Director. And uh, Dr. Wang Rui uh, in Side, uh, in the middle of our seats. Uh, she is senior vice president and the chair of Intel China, responsible for leading and the Intel China business and the teams at Intel Corporation. And Ms. Ray joined Intel in 1994 and has rich experience finding in the, uh, leadership roles during tech innovation and the industry corporation. And she is also very outstanding female entrepreneur. <laughs> I feel very respect. <laughs> and Mr. Ma, uh, he is the founder and the CEO of Dizzy Twin. Um, and he, he graduated from Tsinghua University and specialized in Industry 4 and uh, 4.0. Uh, so, um, welcome our three outstanding speakers today, and let's begin our uh, conversation. So the first question uh, today, I want to talk about the concept of industry metaverse. Um, we had many concepts this year, like industry digitalization, like, um, uh, like digital trends, uh, many, many concepts. So what is the industry metaverse? So um, can you explain from your own angles to tell us what is the industry metaverse? Uh, we come from our uh, professor Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, if we look at the trends of our industry, right, we call the automation period. From, of course, that's a mechanization at first. Automation, what's automation purpose? To do things humans don't want to do or they don't do well. Then intelligent system, control, feedback, to do things human cannot do. For example, I want to inspect 100 holes one, one second. You cannot do it. You blink your eyes, half second passed. Intelligent systems do things human cannot do. What is a digital system? One sentence. How to use the data to make decisions. <laughs> right, the three. So if you look at that, we we'll say, okay, used to be when we look at the cyber physical system early years, right, cyber physical system, so you design engineering system from a physics system and cyber system. So you integrate all the interconnect system into a cyber physical world. So you can model them. You can predict them. 
you can communicate and you can control. Yeah, right? That's what it is. Now, digital twin. When you have a machine to machine, you a machine how to create a digital model so the model can continuously interact with it itself, like a jet engine flying in the air. After 40, 20, 40 years, engine retire, but the model keep growing. That become a knowledge, right? That's what digital twin is, long term. Few services, life cycle. Now, what is, I mean, we talk about industrial metaverse. Well, metaverse, meta is a model of a model, supermodel, right? Verse, universe. But the way, sometimes people don't understand what that means. So I use another way to describe. Verse could be explained like, a, it's a, of course, I'm not saying English. I'm saying it's a, it's a virtually engaged recognition and socially exciting. That's a verse. Why is that? Because it's human in there, right? So human interact with the system, virtual system. It could be AR, VR, but eventually you interact, you learn, but it's socially exciting. Large language model is only one piece from the language side. Large knowledge model, another piece, right? And another one is a, the, I think there's two integrate together, and that will give a fast learning and, and the better precision about knowledge uh, engineering. Yeah. yeah, okay, Professor. Yeah. He mentioned many about the uh, di digital twin, yeah. but um, we had our many concepts like the industry, uh, internet, industry digitalization, and now industry metaverse. So what's the difference of these different concepts? I, I think um, Dr. Ray, Dr. Wang Ray, will have many examples for us. <laughs> well, I mean, metaverse has been a pretty hot topic of discussion until like a few months ago, ChatGPT became the harder topic, right? To me, these are um, actually Industrial metaverse is really, I call it, uh, digitalization on steroids, <laughs> okay? And, and it's, I think one of its main characteristics is really the convergence. The convergence of virtual and reality. The convergence of machine and mind, human, right? And the convergence of digital economy and the physical economy. When those converge together, the application of the meta world, meaning the, the not so real world and the real world application, finds this perfect marriage of how we can solve problems in the meta world and that is impacting the real world, like Professor Lee just alluded to. And what's the feature of these? And there's a couple of things. One, I think it's a fusion of technology, it's not one technology. When we talk about metaverse um, application, especially if you talk about industrial application, you will combine AI, you will combine AR, VR, you will combine 5G, digital twin, all of these methodologies and technologies together to have a meta or a imaginary twinning or imaging of the real world and you solve the real world problem when it's hard to solve physically on location in this meta universe and then apply those solutions to the real world. And it's much faster, more efficient, and in many cases, much safer to do, right? The second characteristic or the feature, I think is really the fundamental compute platform, this metaverse application live on. Um, and if people talk about AI, we talk about AI for what, 50 years? Yeah, Why more, is more it than 50 years. more than 50 years, right? And every wave, it kind of fizzles off and dies down. Why is it this time it becomes so much more real? It's because over all these, you know, tens and years and years of our effort, the compute capability becomes substantially better and it can sustain the kind of imaginary innovation that human has put in it used to be in science fiction. Because of that computing power that we can carry out so much more, all the imaginary AI applications, all the metaverse, the, the you know, mirroring the reality with a matter representation becomes supportable. And this includes the compute platform, the network connectivity, the sensing, 
right? The AI application and the cloud to edge infrastructure. And this five is what we at Intel, we call it five super technology power. And so when all of these come together, now you have a metaverse application that can really serve a lot of the, our human needs and industrial needs. And we'll have, I believe we'll have a chance to give examples, but I can give you many. They will say, it's hard to give examples. I said, no, it's really not hard. Um, for example, Intel working with Geely, this is the car company. Well, we had an intelligent platform for every car that drives out, they deliver. We perform 12,000 virtual collision um, uh, testing and 170K mile of uh, road driving test. And physically, this will not be possible. But through the intelligent platform, we work with Microsoft also, we build that platform so it enables all these virtual testing that reflects the real car. And so every car goes out of the door. Combining that with the physical testing, now you know how we ensure the quality of every car getting out of the factory is much, much more solid than before, right? And which human lives is at stake. Um, Olympic Games. You guys, uh, those in China last year, we had the Winter Olympic game here. The game was held with three years, nobody can come into China. And it's a huge venue of multiple sites of compete and with Olympic Control Center, with the media center, with the uh, village the athletes live in. And how do you even set up this environment and make sure when Olympic torch starts, there's no operational failure. What do we do? We digitized, we made a digital tuning of all the stadiums, all the venues, and so the entire Olympic organization in China and in the world can come into that meta world and go do the setups, do the rehearsals, making sure the giant slalom is running smoothly, the angles tweeting, and all of this is done in a twinning environment. And that's industrial metaverse, right? Mm -hmm. um, power grid delivery. Today, electric power becomes more and more important part of our industry. Um, the substation of power supply, um, it is responsible for generating, transforming, transmitting the power, and making sure the power grid does not have failures. Usually, these are legacy platforms and they are huge and human intensive. Sometimes it's even dangerous for people to go in and fix the physical network. What do we do? We put huge computing power in there, reduce, consolidated all the workload, and use, again, the tuning, the metaverse, the um, virtual reality to really simulate the, the power distribution and failures and temperature sensing. And if we sense somewhere has a failure in the meta world, it will flag, say, in this location, in this substation, there is a failure there and what's the reason? And you will still have to deploy engineers to fix it, but now the engineer with the goggle on his head, he knows exactly where it is. He did not need to physically go debug the power system with a lot of physical danger, and he can go there, and his vision will tell him the reason this thing failed is because this overheated, and you're gonna replace this valve, and you'll fix the problem. Mm -hmm. Imagine this kind of application as we have more and more capability, and it keeps evolving, right? And so our world, just like Professor said, things that human cannot do, should not do, or does not perform well, let's leave it to the virtual world and let us drive that virtual world with the right software, right optimization, make it more intelligent to help us solve real world problems. That's metaverse. Thank you, Dr. Wang Wei. Talked a lot about the uh, insight and uh, the examples from Intel. And I remember two key points. The one is metaverse is not a single technology. It's mixed. Uh, it's like AI, VR and AI, uh, and also the second is they will need much more and more computing power. So I think it's very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And from from Dr. Wang Rei's side, uh, uh, side she talked about their Intel platform. And how about Mr. Ma? 
I know that you are doing software, right? So as your side, uh, what do you think about the industry metaverse? Uh, well, um, I, I think uh, industry metaverse uh, is, is kind of, uh, I think it's a new uh, definition and a new uh, diagram of, of tech, uh, technology. Uh, we can, uh, from my perspective, we can call it next generation of so-called internet. So-called so oh. <laughs> thing of uh, digitalized <laughs> platform. Um, it um, does con contain of a lot of different technologies. Uh, for example, AI, blockchain, um, um, 3D engine, and uh, immersive interactive uh, hardware, and the GPU, and a lot, lot of uh, new technologies. Um, yeah, so, uh, so for industry metaverse, I think um, uh, back, back to the uh, hostess, uh, you know, uh, question that we have a lot, we have very good uh, um, base uh, and uh, we have a, a good uh, system, uh, existing system right now for the factory, for example, uh, MES, ERP and uh, IoT system and the PLC system. So based on all of this, and also 5G, uh, based on all of this, uh, we can connect them together. And then we can then, uh, talk to each other uh, with, within different system. And uh, uh, upon that, we can, we can make the data uh, useful and usable. <laughs> and, and we can make them to, to reach the, the person, we, we call it, uh, we, we let the right data to, to reach the right person at the right time uh, with the right way. So, so I think uh, basically uh, in, uh, in, uh, industry metaverse is to uh, make data and make uh, existing uh, technology more useful and more immersive and more friendly and uh, you know, less uh, stressful to everyone. Uh, to not only the expert in, in the company, but also to every operator, every you know, worker uh, in the company. Everyone can use software and everyone can use data to make uh, their own right decision. So, so I think uh, the, the purpose of uh, industry metaverse is to make uh, physical world, uh, make, uh, make the factory uh, run more efficiently and uh, more, you know, uh, close to the customer. So. Okay, thank you, Ms. Mar. And uh, I, at the very beginning, I introduced the three outstanding speakers, but I forgot to introduce myself. So, <laughs> uh, I'm He Jian Zhao from TMT Post Media Group, and uh, we are based in Beijing, and we are a technology and financial uh, business media group. And we also have office and the English version based in New York. So um, after this event, you can also download TMT Post uh, app, like uh, Chinese name is Time80, uh, Time80 application, and you can also see all the events report about this uh, now, uh, summer hours. <laughs> okay, and uh, so uh, as the media people, uh, uh, Everyone knows that the media like to talk about problem. So I want to talk, I also want to talk more about the problems of the metaverse in history and uh, in future. Uh, so I, I will give the questions to three speakers. Uh, what do you think the problems now in the very urge time uh, of the using the metaverse, especially the industry metaverse? So what, what's the main problems, do you think, from professionally? I mean, technology itself, right, cannot solve the problem. You gotta, you, first, we have defined the purpose. I, in our previous session, I talked about clear. We are in a problem-rich environment. We are. Doesn't matter if you are in manufacturing or you're in service business. Always problem, problem, problems. But you run a business for the purpose. The customer is one of your purposes, right? And the worry-free service is your purposes. So, the process is technology where it should be. So purpose is very important. Problem is always there. But the, perp the process is how metaverse should be growing. So one of the things that we look at the future, right, 
we say, okay, you have AR, VR, yes, but it's a tool, a glass. You, you can see what you don't see. That's great, but what are you gonna do? So the three things are gonna happen. Number one, how do we select the right data? Generate data fast enough. I call it the connection phase. I have all the sensors, yeah, but only generate data useful. For example, and you have semiconductors, there's so many different recipe, different, uh, but those are critical steps, those are very important, right? Or you have a manufacturing system. The critical quality relevance, which parameter, right? So you, you have to know those. You don't want to collect all the data. To me, that's a waste of time. So I sometimes hear people say, internet will connect everything. No, not really. <laughs> internet connect to the right things. That's important, right? So data generation. Second thing is the model generation, fast enough, right? If you look at the most recently, the NVIDIA announced the Neural Angelo. Wow, you see the iPhone scan object, quickly model. And the cloud AI will support that, right? The platform. No longer you have to buy your own GPUs. How do you model, build a model fast enough, right? So that's very, very important. Uh, use a low cost way, but the platform driven. So data center will become a computer, right? Yeah, Eventually will be powered AI. The third thing is we we'll dis make decision faster. What I mean? You can make a virtual decisions, try, and virtual fail. <laughs> That's very important. When you have a virtual fail, then you can make decision faster. The reason we don't make decision is because we are afraid to fail. That's why you delay your decisions. But if you can make a decision, virtual fail fast, then you can make decision better, right? I think three things you got. So AR, VR is just a tool. They're not a purpose. Uh -huh. Okay. Data, model, decision. The three things, if you integrate well, that's the purpose. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Good. So it's the difference between tools and the futures. <laughs> yeah, but you, you have to integrate those tools into mm -hmm. the right process. Mm -hmm. Cannot be fragmented, right? You cannot be trying error, right? Mm -hmm. Just like uh, in the, the kitchen, you have each tool, you can cook different things. But the purpose, for example, I want to eat a steam fish, steamer. I want to fry fish, fire, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. custom ask for something first. Then chef cook the way they want to eat. Mm -hmm. So the tool is based on purpose. Mm -hmm. The tool itself cannot generate anything. Microwave sit there, right? So I think it's important to connect tool to purpose. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, Dr. Ray, um, what do you think the problems are being uh, solved today? You think for the <laughs> industry universe? Yeah. Well, I think the problem are being solved today are continually to be problems that we need to solve in the future too, right? And so, uh, some of, because, because like, like Professor Lee said, you know, it's, it's about the right data at the right time, how do we find the right solution fast? All of these will continue to evolve. And as we gain the capability of solving one thing fast, mm -hmm. I'm sure the demand will be saving, solving it faster because we, as the capability increases, we need to solve more complex problems, right? And so I think the fundamental challenge, again, is a collective innovation. I talked about the fusion of different technologies that's needed to make this solve real world problem. And so it also takes collective, collaborative innovation, meaning at the hardware level, at the platform level, at the software optimization level, how do we democratize this whole process and every the entire industry can contribute? How do we generate a heterogeneous infrastructure so that you don't need to say, if I solve this problem, I need this infrastructure. And if I need to do AI, I need that infrastructure. How do we platformize it so that your platform can support these computations and AI compute, uh, innovations in the same platform, and you can write your software optimization across a heterogeneous system, and you write it once, you can deploy it everywhere, right? And so these are from hardware, software, to application yeah. layer. How do we collectively drive that moving forward? Not one company, not even at the scale of Intel, we can do it alone. Yeah. We need this community and the ecosystem to work together. And it also demands an open system because if everybody doing their own closed system, we'll never get there, right? Mm -hmm. And so we need to build it on an open ecosystem that everybody can add to it and we 
drive those innovations. I think that's one of the big challenges moving forward. How do we get the innovation to get to where Professor says we can solve the problem fast, make decisions fast, get the right data, and make the right judgment? I think the second big challenge for our industry is also about talent, right? As the world changes, um, when we went to college, I'm a double E major. I also study philosophy. But we have pretty strict, the Linton, Mead and Conway lies the way for us, the fundamental things we study. But today, what do we teach our students at university so they can come out and really face the challenge of the new world, including the metal ones, right? What skills they need? How do we make sure both at the research level we continue to cultivate the best talent, but at the application layer, we have the workers that can operate in this world, right? Those education also becomes hugely important. Our next generation will live a life, maybe 70% in the meta world, <laughs> only 20% in reality, right? But how do we get people trained to push those technology forward? I think that's another big challenge. There are many more, but yeah. those are just two examples. Yeah, very good. I think it's a very good point that it's not only the problem of the metrics, it's also the problem of the whole industry system, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, if uh, Ms. Ms. Mar, do you think it's, it will be the opportunity for the big company like Intel? It's because it's very complicated technology. So why do you choose such an area to launch your own company? To do the startup is not, maybe not a very good choice for, I think, the young people. Yeah, do you it's think a, so? It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think, uh, I, I think every, every technology, especially uh, metaverse or digital and AI, uh, I think that uh, should come from um, startup. Uh, because, you know, startup is very flexible and very quick. Uh, startup company can, can try everything they think right. Uh, but which, you know, big company like uh, Intel, they, they, they make decisions very carefully and very, it's, it's, it's a big decision. But for startup, they can try uh, every single you know opportunity to 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 verify whether it's right uh, in terms of technology and in terms of uh, market driven and uh, customer needs. So I, I think uh, definitely this uh, uh, metaverse and the digital is a very good opportunity for for startups. Uh, so we choose it. Uh, you know, as 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 uh, uh, my own company, and now uh, we provide this um, this technology, uh, this uh, this software, this service to, you know, uh, for from my my thinking, I provide the, provide this uh, product firstly to 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 a Fortune 500 company, uh, because uh, I think they have very good base of, uh, as I said, data. Mm -hmm. And uh, IT system and uh, talent and and uh, everything you know organized very well, so so I think they they prepare very well for this new technology. Mm -hmm. So I I provide uh, you know uh, product existing product and I uh, call uh, you know invent, uh, innovate together with them yeah. to try to uh, uh, together with them to find the the way. Uh, uh, this technology can can you know uh, uh, go to customer, yeah. I, I think the second wave of of this technology will, uh, must be uh, coming to the SME company, uh, it, which which are uh, suppliers and uh, and uh, uh, supply chain down downstream and upstream of of giant company, because they set up this uh, this standard and they. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, you know, set up this uh, uh, digital uh, digitization, you know, requirement to their their suppliers, so we can go along with them to the SME company. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's that's a way. Oh. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Ma. And uh, there's another question related is that um, how to prepare and teach uh, your employees, especially for the big company like. Uh, entails how to how to teach all the employees to um, maybe to to know their methods 
to know how to use the digitalization. I think it's very um, difficult, and but it's important in in future. I think because people is the most important thing, uh, not only technology. Totally mm -hmm. agree. Yeah. We like to say we start with send everything else is value add by people. So, <laughs> yeah. I thought that's a really good quote of one of our founders. Um, I think there's a two aspects. One is within the company, how do we continue to grow our employee, our technical competency as the universe is shifting so rapidly? Mm -hmm. I think that's really a general, not just meta world, anything, right? Um, we used to say, if you're a doctor, when you're 100, your residual value is probably even more. When you're an engineer, if you don't keep learning, by the time you're 40, you're obsolete. Right? So it's a fundamental gene of continued learning and continued keeping up with the new technology. And as a company, we're always, number one, we have all kinds of trainings. Mm -hmm. Our employees, 87% of our 130,000 some employees are technical and they come from technical background. We provide many rotations, studying, training opportunities, but fundamentally it's promoting that learning attitude, right? Mm -hmm. It's when you need to solve a new problem, what skill do you need? It's not in the past. It's in what you study, what you learn, and what you go invent. It's no different than if I'm a PhD student uh, under Professor Lee doing research. Who is going to teach me other than the fundamentals? The biggest teacher is ourselves. But in a big company, if you promote that kind of culture, then your employee basically are encouraged to continue to learning. And by the way, you are measured by it too. How innovative you are, new, what new scale, skill you're gaining, right? So that's on within the company. I think I talked about you know just human resources in general in the ecosystem. We're also investing in education very, very deeply. I think we're also now realizing the challenges started to really investing in vocational skills. Meaning you don't just need top scientists, you also need the future worker. They have to be AI trained. They have to be meta aware, right? And how do we help the local government collectively to drive those kind of education and training? In China, if you guys don't know, right, so the new China educational system gets to not everybody is guaranteed to go to a high school. Mm -hmm. From there, they started branching out on vocational schools. And we think that's also a great opportunity to train technology aware yeah. vocational education yeah. so that the workers of the future can really be, you know, they have a job. Not only they have one, they're in high demand because the work has changed. Right. And so I think from a human resource standpoint, we both have to be do it in our company and help the entire yeah. ecosystem. Yeah, that's good. If I may add this, right, because uh, I work with the industry a lot. I, my former, I was vice chairman of Foscom before, so um, we use a four P approach. P, first P called principle based. You have to teach principle, right? Doesn't matter, it's a calculus, whatever. Data science, you have to understand what data science is. Mm -hmm. AI is basic stuff. What you can learn by yourself, I can give you a module. That's very important. Second thing is very important, it's called practice-based. We will collect a set of data, the baseline data, internally, the company. So Intel have their own data. You can train your engineers. Yeah. I use the data, use a tool, you do repeat. You repeat, repeat. Many people repeat, so you can yeah. compare. The third, project-based. You take the tool you learn, go back to your team, Formulate your own problems, right? You take the tool, formulate your own problems. Mm -hmm. Eventually, professional based. You have to be a professional like mass black belt to repeat, to teach other people to do one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Principle, practices, project, and professional. Mm -hmm. that, that like, like, yeah, yeah, like Six Sigma, <laughs> yeah. I like but it. that's in my book, Industrial AI book. <laughs> I got Google. a version. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyways, I think it's important. It's not just to understand the talent side, but also the, pro the system to nurture, to cultivate the, the skills. That's all I mean, yeah. Um, good. So uh, because of the time yeah, limit, yeah. I will give you the last question about the future. So from um, Professor Lee's academia angle, and uh, from uh, Dr. Wang Rui's 
industry and also the platform angle and also uh, for the Mr. Mars, maybe you are doing the application, right? From the applications angle. And, and can you um, talk more about how do you think the future of the metals, about the industry metals? And also can give us some cases. I think it will be very useful for startups to choose uh, how to make their uh, own company yeah. and also for those, I, I think it's not only the opportunity for the big companies like like Intel. So from Mr. Well, I mean, if you look at industry, then they take the whole process of business, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a design, you have a manufacturing processes, then you have a uh, work with suppliers, eventually you have to provide customer service or maintenance training. So there are many spaces, right? The, the, I think the maintenance is a big field. Maintenance could be jet engine, could be anything, data center, could be anything. So maintenance always, always has been experience based. In the future, it's going to be evidence based. So you basically, you have a metaverse support that evidence based system, not try and error, systematic, precision maintenance is what you want. Speed, precision, right? That's, and preventive. So then you have manufacturing. It's so all the manufacturing problems, right? The, but you cannot do traditional try and error again. It's called you have a transparency, traceability, right? Mm -hmm. That's what metaverse is supposed to be. Predictability. Mm -hmm. And the design space, collaborations, right? Speed up this, uh, a, a, a possibility without the possibilities, mm -hmm. right? So eventually from design, manufacturing, from maintenance. They all have a very important, of course, most fundamentally, training. <laughs> How do you mean for training, right? That's very important. So, I mean, just typically all business, doesn't matter your medical company, your semiconductor company, aerospace company, same process. Yeah. Okay, because of the time limit, we have yeah. everyone one minute to, yeah. con to conclude the, uh, what will be the future in your side. Yeah. Future is very bright. <laughs> How's that? There's infinite amount of problems to solve, whether in Professor just listed, you know, manufacturing, error detection, you know, specifically to anything. Again, go back to think about what problem is tedious and hard for human to solve. How do we train machine to do that? How do we use the metaverse to do that? How do we use virtual reality to replace what it's hard for us to do and free us up to do the next generation innovation? So it's plentiful. Okay. Yeah, so I, I can describe this in 3A. Uh, <laughs> 4P and 3A. <laughs> okay. 1A is anyone, uh, another A is anywhere, and uh, the third is anytime. anytime. Uh, I think it's the future because uh, anyone, meaning that everyone, uh, even a, a, you know, a, a, a schoolboy, uh, they, can, they can use. Uh, AR or VR device to to interact with uh, software and can enter enter a metaverse, uh, even even uh, industry metaverse. This is everyone. Another uh, another is uh, any any time. In meaning that uh, uh, it's just like a smartphone. Uh, we can we can you know enter uh, our uh, industry society system uh, any anywhere uh, any time even even during the night time because metaverse is uh, is not a physical you know uh, not physical one uh, we we don't need to care about the the <laughs> light and the, the the sound sound <laughs> rise or sound you know sunset so i think uh, anyone anytime and anywhere we can enter a digital world and uh, which is uh, you know uh, shared verse together with uh, physical and uh, and uh, digital world yeah okay Thank you. Uh, 3A, I remember it. <laughs> okay, um, the last uh, minutes, I will uh, have my time to you all, to you, everyone. Everyone who coach? Okay, that gentleman. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I am Oscar Antonio, uh, representing Global Shapers, uh, Luanda Hub, Angola. So, uh, every good technology also comes with some challenges. Uh, and the more we're spending time using those technologies like social media, for example, we've been seeing some consequences, especially for young people. So I would like to ask uh, about the implications. What could be those 
and how are you expecting to address the emotional and mental health implications of metaverse either for young people or for employees thank you very much mm. i think this question mm. Professor Yeah, well, we can answer quickly, and Intel and the other can answer. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, employee, right, is you, uh, when you say empowerment, what does that mean, empowerment? They have to make them excited, <laughs> right? So you provide a tool for them to say, hey, we're helping you to augment your productivity, not to monitor you. The human beings fear, right? When you feel, oh, you, what, what do you want me to do? So I think it's a more a base, the baseline is important. We show the baseline what we are, Tell the objective, the bottom line, we want to be. So I give a tool to you so you can improve that productivity, right? So the small success give them confidence. Rather say, I'm just use this whole thing. Probably say, why, right? I think the, the evidence based is very important. Small things first. Small success, build a good confidence. Yeah. I think that's very important. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's actually a really good question. Because like at Intel, where we say we want to drive technology for good but not always that happens, right? And in, in a sense, we have very little control of how the universe uses the technology we create, any technology, right? And, and particularly in, in what we're talking about really is about, um, I used to say, um, if a family has a kid, they were forbidden ever to play any video games. When they go to college, all they do is play video games. Mm -hmm. The forbidden fruit is so strong instead of forbidden something that human nature wants us to discover, and it's in a way also addictive. How do we create a good experience? How do we direct them into the better spaces, right? And we always have this kind of conflict, but there's always room if we put consciousness into it, and if we set the right standard, the policies, all of that has to follow. Whenever there are explosive technology growth, it has to follow with regulatory rules and with consistent um, social consciousness that we promote, right? And so, again, goes back to it doesn't take just one company or one person. It takes the whole community. It truly takes the world as a village to how do we evolve into we use the technology, these superpowers for good. But there is no guarantee unfortunately, right? And so, but we can always do our part. Yeah, I, I have a point to add on to, uh, add on, uh, to guests that uh, is, uh, we, we need to learn, we need to try to learn the, the new technology uh, instead of uh, avoiding uh, yeah. of, it, of them. So, uh, for example, that uh, AIGC uh, right now is very hot and uh, for, for our company, we have uh, some AIGC's uh, customer. Uh, in the school, because they are afraid of, uh, you know, replacing, uh, be replaced by by AIGC, uh, because they are designing designing uh, yeah. designers uh, uh, students. But the the things that uh, uh, the the things that they need to learn how to use AIGC to to do the to do the future work instead of uh, uh, afraid of replacing uh, replaced by them. So, uh, so the thing is that uh, uh, we we just need to to, to learn and uh, and uh, to to face it. Uh, that that's uh, that's a fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, because of the time limit, we have the last uh, question. Okay, this late. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing uh, the very uh, impressive uh, information. Uh, my name is Jing Shen I'm from China. Uh, I also graduated from Tsinghua University, so we are from same <laughs> university. Uh, I represent, uh, represent global shapers from uh, 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 the World Economic Forum. Uh, my question is very quick. So we're talking about like, we, this a combination of a different technology in industrial metaverse. So there's a, one principle is talking about it's a data security. So we are using artificial intelligence or data science. Data security is a very important part of it. So I want to maybe could you guys please share a little bit about what we can do in the future and uh, any way we can to uh, we, uh, any way we can take to protect data security in it, no no matter like in uh, industrial metaverse or industrial digitalization. Thank you. Okay, I think this question is very uh, 
So maybe but I can I can start not. with uh, because uh, alumni. Okay, so I think data transparency and security is very important. Uh, uh, one point is that I think for te technology point of view, we can. Uh, you know, uh, we are trying to implement uh, blockchain technology to to do th this. And another thing is that uh, we we uh, try to uh, you know uh, propose the government to make some uh, policy regulation about the ta uh, data protection and uh, also uh, you know data uh, tra trade trade uh, policy. So th that's what I want to say. Thank you. And uh, yeah, clearly there is uh, policy. There's also technology. So Intel is very big on security. So we build really hardware security features into our system so that it makes it reliable and transparent and secure. Secure meaning that when you don't want to expose your data, how can we enclave it so that it doesn't get exposed, right? So there's technology solution, but it has to couple with the policy. It has to couple with the overall global standard, right? So it's a complex problem, but we need to be very conscious about it from everything we do. How do we make it secure, right? Yeah. Mm. Okay, anything to add, Mr. Lee? Well, this is the long term. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so nobody has a solution short term, but the most important thing is the understand the, 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 the constraints, right? Address continuous improvement. There's no one-time solution. Yep. You gotta have a continuous improvement, <laughs> right? That's, yeah. Okay, that's great. I think it's a very interesting topic and interesting conversation. And they're interesting speakers and also interesting our questions from China's friend, Angra's friend. Thank you so much. Thanks again for your coming. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.